Hi, I'm Dr. Angie Beltzos from Vios Fertility Institute. We are in Chicago, St. Louis, and Milwaukee, and we are so excited to be part of IVF Babbles event. So thank you for including us. Let's take a minute. We are talking about natural fertility. So to get pregnant, we need a good egg, healthy uterus, and fast swimming sperm. When we talk about the egg, you are born with all of your eggs. We're born with about 3 million, lots of eggs, and every egg is actually in a cyst called a follicle. And once a month, one egg will pop out like popcorn. Some women can feel that. It feels like a little zing when it pops. Um, and at that time, you might also notice a little bit of slippery uh, discharge or slippery when you wipe. You know, it's interesting, um, as we go from our childhood into puberty, we are already losing eggs. They start um, disappearing even from the moment we are born. And egg quality is actually the best when we're in our 20s. And after that, eggs start to kind of lose their oomph and their speed. That's um, a concern. Once the egg is ovulating, um, the egg has to travel into our fallopian tube. It's a little bit like basketball. Um, you gotta make that all net and the egg has to travel into the fallopian tube and it will wait here in the fallopian tube for sperm to swim to it. So people ask, how good are my eggs? How many eggs do I have left? And by doing a simple blood test and an ultrasound, you can understand your egg health. We call that ovarian reserve financial reserve, how much money's in the bank, and ovarian reserve are how many eggs you have in the bank. FSH has been that classic hormone that helps us understand if we have good eggs or if we're close to menopause. And today, one of the sexiest hormones for us is AMH, anti-malarian hormone. And AMH in the United States uses a number between one and three, one and five to, to tell us that you have a good number of eggs. So a low AMH is a concern because that means we don't have as many eggs left. In Europe, the, um, we use a different value and that number is between 22 and 48 um, picomoles per liter. So if you have a low AMH, whichever measurement tool you're using, um, that could be a sign that the fuel light's on and we don't have as many eggs as we used to do used to. Estrogen is another hormone that's really important. Estrogen can give us good hormone balance and you can also do an ultrasound to check your ovaries. The ovary, like a glass of champagne, has eggs bubbling around everywhere. The eggs that bubble to the surface of the glass are the eggs for this month and they kind of look like these little black circles and inside each black circle is an egg. So we also use that. But AMH is a really important hormone, as I mentioned, and it's made by every tiny egg is making a little bit of this protein AMH. And so as we run out, a low egg reserve could be a concern. Um, the other side of the coin is if you have a high AMH, that might be a sign that you have a lot of eggs, which on one hand is a good thing, but it could also be a sign of a condition called polycystic ovarian syndrome. And most women, especially if you're in your 20s, 30s, will have kind of a medium amount and a normal amount of eggs left. So, you know, we are talking at IVF Babel and at Vios Fertility with our patients about, you know, what this means. Let's say we draw someone's blood and the AMH is low. People get very concerned because they're like, oh my gosh, that means I cannot get pregnant with my eggs. And that's actually not true. It does not measure that your eggs that you have, even if you don't have very many, you could still get pregnant with a baby with those eggs. But understanding that in the context of your FSH, your AMH, and the ultrasound, um, can really help your doctor frame what would be best for you in regards to treatment and also what kind of medicine might be helpful. So again, if you're falling out of range, make sure that you have a good understanding of what that could mean. If um, people have been told, oh my gosh, your AMH is undetectable, it's practically zero. Does that mean you have no eggs left? No.
You do not necessarily need donor egg, even though an AMH could be very low. We can oftentimes still help you get pregnant, but it could be a sign that there may not be very many and donor egg could become an option now or in the future. But by itself, people have made that mistake to think that that's the only way that they can get pregnant. So, um, you know, people ask, well, what is definite um, about not being able to use your own eggs? Number one is how old you are. Um, that could be a very big indicator. As we get closer to 40, oftentimes we have run out of eggs or at least run out of good ones. And understanding that you should try at least to have a conversation with your fertility doctor and expert about options, even when you have a low AMH or you might be in your 40s, definitely see if you're a candidate for IVF because IVF can help patients before they move on to donor egg to try to be pregnant with their own eggs. If you have a low AMH, it does not always mean that you need a donor egg because some women, their AMH might be low, but they still have quality eggs left, especially if you're younger. It's possible that you still could be. People ask, is there something definite? Is there a time where you know you will not be able to use your own eggs? The chance of getting pregnant, for example, in our mid 40s, 45 years old, is gonna be less than 5%. And women who are in their 40s with a high, a, um, high FSH level, si showing signs of menopause, like not getting their period, almost definitely those women will need a donor egg to help them achieve pregnancy. People ask, is there anything I can do to improve the quality of my egg? Number one, healthy living. That can mean, for example, um, not smoking. Uh, marijuana can impact things as well. So try to limit any of those recreational drugs. Uh, coffee is okay, but in moderation. You can have a cocktail, but not too many. And other things like CoQ10 vitamin supplements, we have those at Vios, but we think that they can really impact the quality of the egg that's being developed. So micronutrients can be very impactful. And finally, um, when you're doing IVF, there are certain protocols that might be very helpful for you. For example, there is priming protocol. So ask your doctor about being able to take something before the cycle of IVF, like estrogen or testosterone. Sometimes a birth control pill is used, but that could be over suppressive to the, um, to the cycle. So I'm not a big fan um, most of the time for women in their 40s of using a birth control pill because it quiets things down sometimes too much, but it can sometimes be helpful. Number two is a step down protocol where you might start off high and drift down lower with your medications and growth hormone. Growth hormone is available for children to help them grow tall, but in some women, um, especially women who do not have cancer, diabetes, or who are really sick, they can have a benefit from human growth hormone to help improve the quality of their egg. And again, micronutrients can be very impactful. So that's a quick review of AMH, anti-malarian hormone. Have yours checked. It doesn't really matter where in the cycle you are, but a good time to do it with FSH and an ultrasound is when you're on your period. So best of luck with all of this. Thank you, IVF Babble, for including me. Hope you have a great time.